Thank you for being with us on QTV. We appreciate your viewership. Time now for the news. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has unearthed a scam in which over 8,000 heavy duty vehicles have been dubiously imported into the country, resulting in government losing 480 million kwacha in taxes. Seven people have died in a road traffic accident after a truck they were in plunged into a dry stream in Itajitezi district. And the Council of Churches in Zambia, CCZ, has charged that President Edgar Lungu's fight against corruption is a mere public relations exercise. With the news in detail, my name is Machamanda Machamanda. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has an earth to scum in which over 8,000 heavy-duty vehicles have been dubiously imported into the country, resulting in government losing about 480 million kwacha in taxes. Addressing a media briefing in Lusaka, ZRA Corporate Communications Manager Topsy Skalinda says the authority received intelligence information which prompted it to begin investigating the importation of the said heavy-duty vehicles dating back as far as four years ago. Mr. Skalinda says the authority has so far revoked 136 licenses for clearing companies and blocked their taxpayer identification numbers. TPIN on the Asikuda award system in connection with the same scam. He says ZRA will, on the 25th of June, publish the first batch of the heavy duty trucks imported dubiously, while the other list will be published next week. Mr. Skalinda has since called upon owners of the vehicles that will be published to report to the Inspectorate and Customs Enforcement Unit officers within 14 days from the date of publication. Investigations into this matter continues and more vehicles will actually be uh, unearthed and also more clearing agents or more smugglers who are pretending to be clearing agents will also be brought to book. What has been happening in general is a situation where I'm sure you're aware there's what is called VAT deferment where if you are involved in manufacturing or um, into industrialization activities, the government of the Republic of Zambia has put in tax incentives to encourage people to go into these sectors. So if you are bringing in a vehicle that is 30 ton and above, what happens is that if you qualify for that uh, facility, your VAT is deferred. Duty, there's no duty on these vehicles, but what is there is just VAT. So your VAT is deferred in the sense that it should be paid at a later stage. But what these guys have been doing is that an individual brings in a vehicle and they deliberately decide to use the tipping of a company that is VAT deferred to bring it in. So at the time of importation, they use the, a different tipping for the company that enjoys that facility then they bring in the vehicle when the owners of this company or this tipping are not even preview to this case so far what is shocking is that we've only checked eight tippings and on these eight tippings this is where we have found so far above eight thousand vehicles that have been brought into the country and as an authority we are going to go out and check every tree tipping and we'll backdate we'll go back five years and check anything that has been brought up or that has been brought in not only vehicles but all the imports that have been brought in using these tipping a truck carrying people goats pigs and chickens has plunged into a dry stream at kayawa area along the d769 road in the district in the early hours of monday killing seven people and injuring several others Itajitaji District Commissioner Hendrix Kaimana has confirmed the accident to Zanis, saying seven people have died on the spot while three others are in a critical condition in Itajitaji District Hospital. The accident happened at an open point where the road contractor Build Trust is building a bridge. Mr. Kaimana says the Hino truck registration number BAE9533 glided over the dry stream and plunged into the bed of the stream. He explains that the incident happened around 01 hours this morning and the driver who is not yet identified is among the dead. The bodies of the deceased, which include a baby, have since been taken to a district hospital mortuary. Mr. Kaimana says the truck was en route to Kasumbalesa border, where the farmers were expecting to sell their animals. He has since cautioned motorists driving along the D769 road to look out for signage and detours at Kayawe area to avoid plunging into cliffs where the bridge will be constructed. 
and Tejiteji District Livestock and Fisheries Coordinator Shepard Piri says the truck driver had no livestock permit, hence he was driving in the night to avoid paying required fees. And a check by Zanis at the scene found traffic police officers and workers from a build trust working to retrieve the bodies of the deceased and securing the pigs and chickens from a mangled truck. Members of Parliament have been reminded of the responsibility they have to ensure our government respects national and international commitments towards achieving universal health coverage, UHC. Visiting European Parliamentary Forum on Population and Development Executive Committee member Doval Sakalian says national action plans on UHC must be implemented and monitored. Speaking during a UHC Parliamentarian's Dialogue and Study Tour at Parliament Buildings in Osaka, Ms. Sekalin says it is not enough for government to prepare UHC action plans without evaluating their objectives. Ms. Sekalin, who spoke on behalf of a delegation of members of parliament from Europe, USA and within Africa, notes that lawmakers therefore have a key role in ensuring progress towards UHC. We therefore call on all parliamentarians to continue their support for securing the availability and access to reproductive health supplies. In our respective parliaments, we also keep our promise to fully harness the demographic dividend by investing in youth and supporting all actors engaged in providing services for sexual and reproductive health. We must also ensure that national and international commitments made by the governments are respected. <coughs> national action plans must be implemented and monitored and re-evaluated to see if it works. It's not enough to just prepare the paper. It's really important to make it real, to make it work. So members of parliament have a key role to ensure the progress towards universal health coverage and in our common goal against maternal, neonatal and child health, female genital mutilation, violence against women, early and forced marriage, unwanted pregnancies and unsafe abortions. And Health Minister Chitalu Chilufia says Zambia's long-term development agenda is guided by its National Vision 2030. Dr. Chilufia says the country's 7th National Development Plan, Health Policy and National Health Strategic Plan 2017-2021 sets clear directions for the development of the health sector. He states that Zambia's health sector has no higher priority than universal health coverage. The role of the health sector in this the National Development Plan is to coordinate that function of building a healthy population from where we will derive a healthy workforce to drive our social economic development agenda. What then are we doing as a health sector in order to drive this agenda? We have designed the National Health Strategic Plan with a screaming statement of intent to attain universal health coverage by building health systems that are robust and resilient enough to achieve health for all and all anchored on an integrated community-based primary health care approach. Speaking at the same dialogue, Speaker of the National Assembly, Patrick Matavini, affirmed Parliament's commitment to participating in building a robust and resilient health sector in the country. I wish to express my gratitude to all the delegates who have traveled from different countries to attend this dialogue and study visit. I'm informed that the delegates participating <coughs> in these activities have been drawn from 15 countries across the world. We are therefore humbled as Zambians in general and the National Assembly in particular to play a host to such distinguished guests. I'm very confident that you will enjoy your stay and the customary warm hospitality of the Zambian people as you proceed with the dialogue and study visits. The Council of Churches in Zambia has charged that President Edgar Lungu's fight against corruption is a mere public relations exercise. CCZ General Secretary Father Emmanuel Chikoya has urged President Edgar Lungu to demonstrate in practical terms his commitment to fighting corruption in Zambia. Father Chikoya has noted that corruption in Zambia is still a problem militating against the development of the nation despite the efforts at fighting the scourge. He has told AQ News in an interview that President Edgar Lungu should take decisive and concrete action 
against corruption in the country by walking the talk. And so people are waiting to, to see uh, the talk being uh, walked. And so we, we need to walk the talk and not talk the talk. And so basically, you know, the, 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 everything rises or falls on leadership. And so, uh, I, I mean, the, the, there's no beating about the bush. Uh, the, the role of every president is very pivotal. And uh, so we look forward to the president being very decisive and uh, taking very concrete and decisive decisions around this issue so that the leakages are stopped. I mean, they are for the good of everybody, including those in leadership. When there's enough money, uh, it will be well utilized and things will be happening and people will celebrate their leadership and the legacy they will leave behind. A textile company in Surat City in the Indian state of Gujarat has expressed interest in setting up a 15 million US dollars textile facility in Zambia. Sanjo Dang and Printing Mills Private Limited Director Vishal Budia says the investment, which has potential to reduce the cost of linen, might take one year to be operational and is expected to create about 400 jobs. Mr. Budia has since promised the use of his position as Confederation of Indian Industry Con convener task force on textile Gujarat State Council to urgently lead a delegation of textile industrialists to Zambia. He was speaking when Zambia's High Commissioner to India, Judith Kabijimpanga, toured the textile facility. Sanju Prince Private Limited is involved in spinning, weaving and finishing of textiles in Surat City in the Indian state of Gujarat. Zambia's High Commissioner to India, Judith Kapijimpanga, toured the textile facility 2,000 kilometers away from the Indian capital, New Delhi. Sanju Dying and Printing Mills Private Limited Director Vishal Bodia says he is willing to invest 15 million US dollars in Zambia in setting up a textile factory. So if not alone, I can at least plan with my few friends to have a joint venture there. Uh, with a four or five friend uh, team and we can set up an industry on a green field. We will need some of your help and uh, uh, I'll talk to Mr. Ajay Bhattacharya and plan for a visit there. Your coming and making a decision will go a long way in creation of employment, especially for the youths. We've got a huge cadre of skilled and semi-skilled human resource. 400 jobs would be created. The exercise might take one year to be operational, adding that this might reduce the cost of linen in Zambia. Bangwenavile, Gujarat, India. And uh, Mrs. Gabijimpanga says investing in Zambia has many benefits as an investor can export to Sadiq and Comesa regions as well as the USA through Agoa. She says the mission recorded three companies in the first half of 2019 that have started operations in Zambia. Among them are Prasad Seeds, Vagmi Cottons, and OM Rollers and Set Smelters with a combined investment worth over 100 million US dollars, with the total investment from India to Zambia now standing at 8 billion US dollars. The Ministry of General Education has noted the need for enhanced uh, stakeholder interrogation in school dropouts starting from primary to secondary level. Making a presentation in an open schools during the launch of the Open Education Resources in Osaka, Open and Distance Education Director Bridget Moyer has disclosed that as of 2018, the enrollment rate of grade 1 stood at over 3 million pupils, but only 36% of these completed grade 12. Mrs. Moyer states that school dropouts are not just at junior or senior secondary levels, but also at primary level, as 3 million. 339,245 pupils enrolled for grade 1 in 2018, but only 97.3% successfully completed grade 1, indicating that a 1.7% dropout. She has attributed the rate of school dropouts to various factors, which include teenage pregnancies, poverty in homes, and lack of proper sanitation facilities for the girl child. Mrs. Moyo says the Ministry of General Education is therefore expanding education participation by promoting lifelong learning and the provisions of skills training and development opportunities through the open and distance learning and multimedia mode in schools, open learning centers and colleges of education. So we are saying already, yes, we have statistics which are showing that there's an increase in 
enrollment of that magnitude, and we are saying uh, from grade one to grade seven, it's at 3.3 uh, 3 as at 2018. But if you look at the enrollment from grade eight to grade nine, just look at the 2018 statistics. We only had 491,557 learners. So what happened to the 3 million we, we had enrolled from grade 1 to grade 7? Who is accounting for those? We go down to senior secondary, the number of enrollment is even going down. But when you compare between 2014 and 2018, you would think we are increasing. But when you go downwards, you will see that the bulk of the learners we enrolled in primary school as we get to secondary school, it is going down and down. So what is happening to those learners? The Center for Trade Policy and Development, CTPD, has appealed to President Edgar Lungu to urgently reopen the Copper Belt University without any further delay. CTPD Executive Director Isaac Mwaipo says the silence by government on the continued closure of CBU is not healthy for a country like Zambia, which is in so much need of development. Mr. Mwaipo says the center is disheartened to note that the Copper Belt University has been closed for close to three months now. He has expressed sadness that Zambia has continued to view the education sector as a cost while other progressive societies around the world invest in the education sector as a panacea for sustainable economic development and poverty reduction. Mr. Mwaipopo says there is urgent need for better ways of resolving issues rather than resorting to disrupting the university calendar if public universities are to improve on performance ratings. It is sad to note that it is now close to three months since the university was closed. Uh, while we appreciate some of the concerns that were raised before closure of the university, uh, we do not think that closing the university resolves the challenges that uh, the university is facing. Uh, this also takes into consideration some of uh, the challenges that other universities like the, Cop the, the University of Zambia have been facing. Uh, statistics and studies have continued to show that countries that have made progress uh, also countries that have invested their resources in human uh, development. There is urgent need for our country to realize the importance of education if we are to actualize most of the aspirations that we have in strategic documents like uh, the seventh national development plan as well as vision 2030 that hopes to see this country become a prosperous middle income country by 2030, which is 11 years away from now. It is. The civil society scaling up nutrition, CSO Sun Alliance, has expressed fear that Zambia will lose the, the gains it has made in reducing malnutrition due to the low yields from the agriculture sector. CSO Sun Country Director Matthew Muhuru has noted that the decline in maize yields as projected by the 2019 crop forecast survey will negatively affect the fight against malnutrition in the country. Mr. Muhuru says that he has observed the need for government and other stakeholders to ensure the hunger situation in the country is addressed. Great. So, uh, with the results showing that there's a drop in the rates of uh, malnutrition in Zambia, we have a risk, uh, especially in 2019, when we're expecting yields to, to be less. So, with the increased hunger in the country, the chances that we we'll actually lose the gains that we've seen today uh, from the demographic health survey become very high. So as government and as stakeholders, we should not really uh, rest. We should put in efforts to ensure that uh, the hunger situation in 2015 does not negatively impact uh, the reduction in nutrition. The Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, has called on parents to pay more attention to their children with a view to curbing the menace of drug abuse among children. DEC Deputy Public Relations Officer Kanfisa Machinshi says there is need for the parents to monitor the activities of their children in order to prevent them from engaging in illicit activities. He has told Acu News that as Zambia joins the rest of the world in commemorating World Anti-Drug Day, which falls on the 26th of June, there is need for parents to pay attention to the activities of their children. Mr. Manchishi says as a result of neglect, children as young as nine years are engaging in drug abuse. 
He has uh, since encouraged parents to take up the responsibility of educating the children about drug prevention at an early age to help fight drug abuse in Zambia. And when you look at our counseling center, for example, where we offer free counseling, we have realized that uh, most of the children that come through, even as young as the age of nine years um, old, they are abusing these drugs, turning to these drugs, uh, not because they've run out of things to do or peer pressure, no, but because they have been neglected by parents, because they're not being uh, cared for, you know. Parents are not there in their lives, they're always busy on the phones, they're busy on the laptops. If they're not doing that, they're at work and they don't have time to look into what's happening in their children's lives. So these children uh, have nowhere else to turn to and they, they tend to abuse drugs. So we want to urge parents to always know, at least take an interest what is happening in your child's life. It will make a very big difference. Some of these that could have turned to drugs, you will help them. You know, they'll open up to you and you are able to provide the help. And for those parents that might have children who are abusing drugs and are addicted, uh, please feel free to come forward to DEC. We'll open up to you, bring them so that they can go through the counseling. If there's need for further help, we'll refer them to the relevant facilities. Agriculture and Commercial Society of Zambia President Caroline Siluamba has encouraged farmers to turn up in numbers at the forthcoming agriculture show in Lusaka, which will be held from the 31st to the 5th of August, 31st July to the 5th of August 2019. Mr. Suluamba says the show will accord farmers an opportunity to learn more on crop diversification and ways of mitigating climate change that characterize the 2018-2019 farming season. Speaking during a show society media workshop in Osaka, Mrs. Suluamba says climate change is a serious problem that needs urgent attention from all the stakeholders. She explains that during the show, experts and farmers will gather to share how best to address crop diversification in Zambia. My cry this year is that please inform the masses out there that the show society appreciates the problems the farmers are facing, especially with the drought-related problems. There is nothing much they can do, but there's quite a lot the government can do for us, is to teach them how to mitigate those problems. That is my personal view. The government should come in and teach the farmers. That is where we, as the show society, we are coming in and we are going to have a lot of workshops. We would appreciate you, the mass, to come in and join us. Inform the farmers out there in Shangombo, Kaputa, wherever. They will read, they will follow you, either it's on radio, or newspaper, please inform them. There is always a way out of a problem. Professor Steven Simukanga has become the second Zambian ever to be appointed as chairperson of the UNESCO Natural Resources Commission. Professor Simukanga will chair the meeting of the commission on the sidelines of the 40th UNESCO General Conference to be held in November this year in Paris, France. And in an interview with QTV News, Professor Simukanga who is Higher Education Authority Director General, has described as his appointment as an honor. Professor Smukanga says he intends to use his chairmanship to influence decisions that will be made by the Commission at the General Conference. As you know, as a person, you, you have an influence of, of, on the decisions that are made. Um, I am aware that uh, from the teleconference that we had, there is a budget um, which will be for natural sciences and we want uh, Africa to benefit from that budget so that more science activities uh, are held in Africa and of course Zambia should also benefit from that. So as a person we have influence on how, how things go and uh, um, my goal will be to influence the decisions. When we are presiding over um, the commission of 192 people, we are basically responsible for the direction of the agenda and also decision making. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a real honor for me.
to be chosen to um, in that role. A government has been called upon to seriously consider decentralizing cancer hospital services to all provinces in the country. Human rights lawyer Mono Mapani is concerned that despite the vastness and growing population, Zambia has one specialized cancer hospital. Mr. Mapani says government should realize that it is denying people their right to health care by having only one cancer hospital located in Lusaka. In an interview with QTV News, Mr. Mapani has wondered how government expected people to continue traveling along distances, thus long distances, to Lusaka for specialized cancer treatment amidst tough economic conditions. Two days ago, I was in Mambova. Mambova is in Western Province. I found a woman by the roadside stopping vehicles and she had completely nothing. But she has information that there is cancer health center or a cancer center here in Osaka. And this is a woman who, has, who doesn't have relatives in Osaka. She has nowhere to spend the night and she was getting to Osaka. And it really pains and this is purely violation of people's rights. People, among other things, are supposed to access as a group under third generation right is access to medical services. And the, in an absence of this, it's a violation. So we expect the patriotic flight to start considering the interests of the citizens. And this is a lady who traveled all the night yesterday, yesterday and go to Osaka, but got stranded. One, she had no relatives in Osaka. Second, she didn't know where UTH is. Third, she has no money even to get back to Mambova. And this is the situation that we're in. The money that these guys are actually misusing, this is the money, or this is the money we are supposed to spend to build those centers. Patriotic Front Central Committee member Lazarus Chungu says President Ed Galungu deserves the honorary doctorate. In good governance, the University of Zambia intends to bestow on him. Mr. Chungu, who is also a Pososhi member of parliament, says it is not up to anyone opposed to the University of Zambia's Senate decision to confer President Lungu with a PhD to decide whether the president deserves it or not. He has argued that President Lungu deserves to the honorary doctorate in good governance given the record of his presidency. Mr. Chungu says besides being tolerant to divergent views, upholding the rule of law and defending of the Republican Constitution, President Lungu leads the most democratic party in Zambia. He adds that President Lungu has also been able to balance a governance and application of the law. Well, we've come to the end of the news on that particular note, but before we do that, here's a recap of stories in the headlines. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has an FTA scam in which over 8,000 heavy-duty vehicles have been dubiously imported into the country, resulting in government losing $480 million in taxes. Seven people have died in a road traffic accident after a, tra a truck they were traveling in plunged into a dry stream in Itajiteji district. And the Council of Churches in Zambia, CCZ, has charged that the President Lungu's fight against corruption is a mere public relations exercise. That will do it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. Pleasant viewing. Bye-bye.